Hello, welcome to my channel, another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do a library tour video. This was originally started by Steve Donahue. Today, I am going to be showing a series of books from called Richard Blade and written by Jeffrey Lord. Now, Jeffrey Lord is not an actual author. He has at least three authors writing under a house name for a publisher. And this series was started in 1969 and went through 1984. Now, some of these covers are a little bit lurid, and I say that um, not as a trigger warning, more as a carnival barker saying, come on and take a look. So if you're waiting for high literature, you're not going to find it. You're just going to find some uh, cheesy, pulpy covers of a fairly trashy science fantasy series. Oh, book one. The Bronze Axe. Lost World catapulted into an unknown dimension of time and space by the wizardry of modern science. Richard Blade finds himself at the feet of a strange and beautiful woman. The Jade Warrior. Now look at that. You get a little bit of male butt crack defending a, a woman with a sword. A civilization without hope. When a computer transported Richard Blade to Dimension X, he found himself in mortal danger. Dimension X was a land of peril. Book number three, Jewel of Thorn. Um, kind of a boring cover, just gladiator types fighting it out. Savage Women. The trumpet blasted and the women stormed into the arena like a tidal wave, like a tidal wave. Teeth glinted white and feral and contorted faces. Breasts of every size and type bobbed and jounced as the female struggled against female to claim her quarry. I don't know. Those look like two men fighting. Book four, Slave of Smarna. Smarma. It is a clothing optional lifestyle. Blade is naked, and you do see his butt crack. The woman does seem to be uh, wearing clothes, though. Into the unknown, Lord Lighten smiled at Blade and pressed a switch. Electricity bubbled in Blade's body. Current flowed through his veins, moving sluggishly at first, like a stagnant canal water, dammed up, and then it burst. Four, Liberator of Jed. Eh, has a nice baboon type creature with a sword. A doomed people, Richard Blade, an English gentleman, is the perfect subject for some very unusual scientific experiments. In the latest one, he is sent back to the Stone Age to live in a cave with strange otherworldly creatures. All right, book six, Monster of the Maze. Now, here Richard Blade is buck naked, defending a buck naked woman from an alligator with a sword. Blade did not believe it. He did not want to believe it. The computer had played a strange tricks on him before. But this? Was he a Tom Thumb reduced in size to a mannequin? Or was he still his normal self in a dimension where everything else was so massive that he was dwarfed? Now, if you're going to live in a clothing optional society, I guess it's necessary to defend your women from large alligators with blades. Book seven, Pearl of Patmos. Now we go, flames, smoke, pungent and stinging in his eyes and nostrils made him cough and wretch. Blade, his head a mass of pain, opened his eyes and saw fire devouring wooden beams high above him. He lay on a hot stone, the floor of a vast temple, naked, unarmed, stunned by the trip through time. Blade had never been so physically weakened 
and so nearly paralyzed by the electronic reconstruction, a reconstructing of his brain cells. Eight, undying world. Well, I guess in the undying world, you're allowed to wear trousers and the women get bikinis. A train to hell. It was foolish to take the train to hell when he should be following the blonde to paradise. Now, I would follow a blonde to paradise anytime. But what could Blade do? The dimension, the, the destination sign said hell. Blade stopped aboard and the blade stepped aboard and the doors wheezed behind him. The train left the tunnel and he was shot into space. Book number nine, Kingdom of Royas. Pirates ahead. Blade is stranded on a raft in the middle of the ocean when he spots several survivors of a shipwreck. He takes them on board. Together, they weather a savage storm and kill a band of ferocious pirates who are in pursuit. Uh, is that clothing optional? Is he wearing any clothes? I don't think so. Ice Dragon. Now here, take a close look. It's a clothing optional lifestyle. Both men and women are naked and you can see male and female butt crack on the cover. And I, I don't think you see butt crack on covers in any modern publications. Monster Attack. The men of Indra, tough as they were, stared the face of death, lumbering slowly, inexorably toward them. The bravest among them gripped their weapons tightly and licked their lips in anticipation. Then the ice dragons reared up and Blade caught his first glimpse of the Dragon Master. Of course, like you said before, clothing optional lifestyle, you have to defend your women naked with swords. Number 11, Dimension of Dreams. This is a clothing society. Both the Blade and his female are wearing clothes. Dream time. In a new dimension of time and space, Blade finds himself in a strange crumbling city that seems to be the result of a very advanced technology. Violent gangs roam the streets. The area is brutalized by robbery, rape, and murder. King of Zonga, giant snake monster. This is a society with clothes. Serpent monster, it writhed backward, bent into a bow and lifted a head as large as a horse's up from the surface of the pond. The head rose slowly, bobbing and waving at the end of a neck thicker than Blade's own body, occasionally opening a mouth rimmed with foot-long, dagger-pointed teeth. Number 13, the Golden Steed. A sacred mission, leaving a trail of dead and maimed men behind him. Blade again mounted the magnificent Golden Steed and rode towards the town ahead, but unknown to him, they were awaiting him to honor and adore him and provide him with perhaps the greatest challenge of his life. Temples of Ican? More clothing. Sacred Murder. Blade's newest adventure finds him in a bizarre and savage river land. Its murky waters teem with ferocious man-eating creatures. Giant bat-like aranki dart from the dense jungles looking for prey and dead bodies carved up with bat-wing symbols litter the streets of the city of Alicom. Towers of Melanon. 
the war of matriarchy. After 14 successful trips to Dimension X, Blade is still the most per nearly perfect physical and mental specimen of planet Earth. But on this, his 15th journey through time and space, all his facilities as both a warrior and a man are stretched to their outermost limits. 16. The Crystal Seas. More clothing optional societies. That sea creature is very conveniently covering Blade's donkey bits with its tentacle. How kind of him. You don't want these people seeing Blade's naughty bits. The Emperor of Nrun. In his most challenging adventure, Blade is held captive in a new dimension by a marauding race of amphibious mermen. But Blade quickly learns that none are so treacherous as the double-dealing Nurinians who conspire to pit the mermen against the floating sea cities of Talgar in a lethal struggle destined to end in mutual annihilation. Nice lady being held against the rocks. Book number 16, The Mountains of Briga. I'm not sure if Blade is wearing clothing or not in this. The lady's thigh is conveniently covering those parts. He may be wearing a jock strap, who knows? War of the Sexes. Blade's trained hearing had picked up the sound of footsteps approaching slowly and stealthily with a quick jerk of his powerful arms. He has pulled himself back into the tree. Through a dense foliage, he saw the eight young women dressed in camouflage suits. Warlords of Gyaikon. Ritual death. Blade arrives in the Emperor of Gaikon, a feudal society, a land much like the Japan ruled by the Takanaga shoguns. In search of clothing, he appropriates a dark blue robe, not knowing that blue is the color reserved for the ruling class. He is rewarded by a fight to death. He wins, having proven himself to be worthy of the Da Bruno, or warrior class, he becomes an ally of an important and wealthy lord. Book 19, Looters of Thorn. Oh, we're in a clothing optional society again. You see Blade's butt crack. Return voyage. For the first time, and without intending to do so, Blade returns to a dimension that he has visited before, Tharn. He is presented to their king and finds him to be his son. Oh, he has a king as his Blade's son is a king. Blade's only child and sire, but a few short years ago, Tharnian time being different from the home dimension time. And he got a nice little uh, machine with tentacles. Book number 20, Guardians of the Coral Throne. Savage princess landing in a new dimension, Blade and a young barbarian woman who has befriended him are taken captive. Blade's fighting ability wins him first the role of gladiator. Then he is appointed as a guardian of the Coral Throne the elite military force that acts as a bodyguard to the emperor. He is loyal to his emperor and is rewarded by being made general of the army. Twenty-one, Champion of the Gods. That looked like a Conan the Barbarian cover. Dimension times dimension. Blade lands in a new dimension, a bleak desert, with a city of black jade rising against the horizon. 
Mistaken for a desert tribesman, he is attacked and captured by the defending warriors of the city. He is sentenced to death, to be burned alive. In prison, he befriends a beautiful woman who is also a prisoner, but trusted because of her being mistress to the warden. 22. Forest of Gilor. Blade versus Beast. Blade arrives in a dimension of Tuong, whose army is made up of huge spider-like beasts. It is there that he meets and falls in love with the beautiful Princess Nina. Nina. Where Blade tries to rescue her from the Mad King's harem, he himself is captured and imprisoned. empire of blood blade versus the emperor landing in a dimension of small cities and kingdoms ruled by the tyrannical emperor richard blade finds himself involved in a plan to dispose of the bloody ruler 24 the dragons of elgnor English Blade. Blade is propelled into a new dimension. Can it be England? An England of the future called Egnlar? On a brink of war with a very military consciousness, a military conscious country called Rusland. 25. The Taronian Pearls. Aerial Attack. Blade lands in a new dimension, a sinister island surrounded by endless swamps. He is soon approached by a tribe of migrants traveling in their ox-drawn covered wagons. Driven out of their land by devastating floods, they are now searching for a new territory. The people are warriors and demand that Blade prove himself in a series of duels before they accept him in their world, Blade, the ultimate warrior, greatly impresses them with his strength and skill in combat. Book 26, City of the Living Dead. Blade in battle. Blade enters a strange new dimension inhabited by primitive warriors, wild beasts, robots, and androids. Master of the Hashomi, Valley of the Hashomi, Blade enters a sinister new dimension, the land of the Hashomi. Here, people are conditioned from birth to be totally immune to pain and fear. Wizard of Rentoro, Rentoro. Dictator of evil, Blade zeroes in on another incredible dimension, this land of 14th century Italian, Italian villages surrounded by olive groves and vineyards. Immediately, Blade sees the men at arms wearing plate armor and bearing shields, raping beautiful women, terrorizing children, and beating old and crippled peasants. Who would beat an old and crippled peasant? Bad, bad people. Treasure of the stars. The space race thrust into an advanced civilization where mountain lions guide across tree, glide across treetops, where flying machines soar through the skies, Blade again fights for survival in Dimension X. Dimension of Horror, book number 30. Now look closely, this monster's chains are broken. We are moments away from Blade defending his, his beauty with a sword. Blade at home. Incredibly, Blade doesn't have to roam far from planet Earth this time. 
There's trouble right here in home dimension. And Blade, the victim of amnesia and a haunted computer, is grounded. Ooh. Gladiators of Hapnu. I, I, I just cannot fathom all these made-up names of places. The blood of Hapnu. The incredible dimension awaits Blade when he awakens in an Amazon-like jungle next to a river with giant crocodiles. Blue-skinned and tattooed tribes of men paddle by in their canoes. Well, you've got lots of weapons and, of course, a beautiful lady. Pirates of Gohar. An empire divided. Richard Blade, special agent for the top secret intelligence unit, is a human guinea pig, paving the way for mankind's space travel. On this trip, his incredible ride to Dimension X is in the new shock-absorbing, stress-reducing Kale capsule. Feeling surprisingly alert and refreshed, Blade lands squarely in the old Phoenician merchant ship about to be attacked by pirates. Killer plants of Batnarok. Plants bite men. Thrust into the medieval feudal society, Blade, as the scheming queen's favored lover, learns of an insidious plot, a brew between the Jaghai nation of farmers and the Easternai nation of mountain miners who are separated only by a forest of killer carnivorous plants. Ruins of Kaldek. You know, we have not seen clothing optional societies um, for quite a number of uh, societies, but he is wearing pants in this one, so no more clothing optional societies. Mechanical Death. Blade's unique explorations take him to a world that has managed, with many changes, to survive atomic devastation. Radiation has produced mutant strains of human beings, and the terrain appears uninhabitable, scattered with the shattered and useless remnants of a technology in a civilization now defunct. The Lords of the Crimson River. Well, the woman is at least topless in this one, facing away conveniently. Medieval war games. Blade, outer dimensional wanderlust, brings him to a strange, unpredictable land that on first glance seems to be operating out of the Middle Ages, dotted with feudal castles and peopled with barons, dukes, and armored knights. Also incorporated into the society, however, are monkey-like creatures subservient to their human masters, but displaying astonishingly, sometimes alarmingly, high degrees of intelligence and often uncertain loyalties. Never trust a monkey creature. Return to Kaldek. Now here, now here's a here's a great cover. He's he's fighting a, a TV or a TV robot, and that woman. She, she looks like she's just had sex with a TV. Can you have sex with a TV? I don't know. Maybe in Caldec. Deadly future. Caldec has changed drastically since Blade's last visit. The ravaged primitive land has become a streamlined world of fantastic space-age technology capable not only of the highest standards of luxury and amusement, but also of devastating nuclear war. Warriors of Latin, savage warring tribes. The indomitable blade is thrust into another dimension 
where warring Indian tribes are waging battle in this spatial extension Wild Indians ride atop huge, powerful, lizard-like horses with long, menacing, weapon-like tails, and big foot creatures feast on warm human flesh after human combat. I'm not sure. Blade might be naked, being covered by a sword. Good to see a clothing-optional society again. And that is the end of the Richard Blade series. I hope you've enjoyed that. I have read the first four books of this series. Um, I have not really been inspired to read more, although they've been very fun to collect. In the comments, uh, let me know if I, if I should read some more of these and make some comments. I know there is um, at least one channel that likes to, to read these um, rather cheesy covers, and um, maybe I'll give it a shot myself. So thank you so much for watching and have a good evening. Goodbye.